Ambassador, thank you so much for joining us on China Daily. Big thank talk. you for being here. Um, first of all, would you please introduce us the general information of Greece and the main attractions to the Chinese mm -hmm. tourists here? First of all, allow me to, uh, to repeat thank you for being here. You are always welcome in this house, in this embassy. Uh, thank you very much for the question. Uh, Greece is a, is a very well-known well place from historic, uh, cultural and touristic point of view. Uh, we speak about a country with uh, five years, 5,000 years history, uh, very rich in, um, in landscape, very rich in uh, culture, very rich in archaeological sites. Uh, I would dare to say similar to China. Uh, we are the cradle of the Western civilization, China is the cradle of the Eastern civilization. Apart from the archaeological sites who are, which are spread throughout Greece, I would point to the touristic aspect of the country. Actually, uh, Greece is lucky uh, to, uh, to have a very diverse landscape. We have the islands, hundreds of them. We have mountains. We have uh, plains. We have beautiful beaches. Um, I would suggest uh, what, what would be my suggestion for the Chinese tourists actually to visit Greece throughout his, his um, territory, but I would point to the, to the islands because they are something unique. Uh, I know that China has um, Hainan Island, but uh, in Greece there are many and there are diverse islands. In Western Greece we have islands which are full of greenery. In the Aegean Sea, Eastern Greece, we have dry islands. We have islands which are very well known to the Chinese tourists, as Santorini or Crete or Rhodos. These are islands which are very well known to Ch in China. But I would suggest that uh, Chinese tourists could expand their interest to other places too. For instance, Northern Aegean, Northern Greece, Thessaloniki is marvelous. Thessaloniki is the center of Byzantine Greece which means Middle Ages Greece, Byzantine Empire, maybe you know this uh, political entity, this empire from your general education at the school. So this is not just ancient Greece, this is Middle Ages Greece and this is the new Greece after the liberation in the 19th century. So in summing up, I think that um, Greece is a very diverse country, interesting country, uh, located at a strategic position, at a very central geographical location which um, offers the um, benefits to the Chinese tourists to combine Greece with other countries, neighboring countries. So uh, I would suggest that I would advise that Greece be included in the schedule of the Chinese uh, tourists of the future. Last year we had 100,000 Chinese tourists visiting Greece. Every year we have 50% increase in the numbers of Chinese tourists to visit Greece. This is very, very promising. We hope that this increase will keep up. I see. Apart from um, the, those popular islands you have just mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, like Santolini, because there are a lot of tourists there, yeah. especially from China, do you have recommendations for, I'm not saying like less populated like islands, but for example, maybe like islands like a Corfu or yeah, Cor yeah, Corfu is not is not less populated. It's a very is very uh, very popular too, but mainly to Western tourists. But it's relatively unknown to Chinese tourists. Speaking of Corfu, I would like to say that uh, last year we initiated the, uh, a sisterhood relationship between Chengdu and Corfu. That means uh, Western China, Central Western China, Central Western China with Corfu. Corfu is very beautiful. It's one of the islands which is full of greenery, but they have extremely beautiful beaches. I could suggest other islands too. Within the same group of islands, I would suggest Zakynthos. I would suggest Kefalinia. I would suggest turning back to the Aegean. I would suggest Skopelos. I would suggest Alonisos, I would suggest another one so that you can have a variety of islands to choose. I would suggest um, the island of Paros. 
and many others who are well known, who have very, very uh, substantial tourist infrastructure. And uh, they have the means to receive Chinese tourists too. See. Um, well, my last question in this aspect, mm. um, if you have, I know you're super busy right now and very tight in schedule, um, if you had a chance to take a vacation actually going back to Greece, which place would you like to go? Actually, uh, the pla I, there are two places I usually go due to my family obligations mainly. I go to Crete and I go to the sea to, the, uh, to, to Peloponnese. Uh, to uh, Peloponnese, the peninsula uh, below Athens. Uh, I go to a specific place which is very beautiful, the city of Nafplion. Nafplion is the first capital of Greece in the early 19th century. It's a small city with uh, 15,000 people now, but the whole city is, uh, is, a, is, a, is, a, is an architectural monument of the 19th century and 18th century architecture, combined with a very beautiful scenery. So if my preferences are guidance for your countrymen, along with the islands I already mentioned, you can combine those two places too. I'm actually personally very impressed mm. by the yogurt made the yogurt in in Greece in Greece so uh, I know it's also being exported to China a lot but still it's it's a little bit expensive so uh, what's gonna happen uh, in the future in in this regard mm -hmm. especially in food export uh, because our premier Li just had a visit last year to Greece mm. so what are the latest development the latest development concerning food stuff first of all and yogurt which is um, uh, well known throughout the world the problem of the price is the following, is the distance. It's the transportation which causes this problem. But we hope the following, that if we can have even more yogurt penetrating the Chinese market, his pri its price will fall. This is, this is the issue now. How we can get it, how we can get it more visible in Chinese supermarkets. How we can get it more approachable, more, more, more easy to, to buy in, in uh, not just in Beijing or Shanghai to other cities of China. This is the difficulty because your, the, the Chinese market is very competitive. In yogurt we have certain advantages because the, the, the synthesis, the makeup of the Greek yogurt is unique. But still we have to compete with other countries who produce, uh, produce yo yogurt because they are cheaper but not of the same quality of yogurt. They do not sell the same quality of yogurt. But uh, I hope that um, with, uh, with the passing of time uh, and with the more, with the progress we make in the Chinese market that the, the, the price of the yogurt will fall. Li Keqian's visit was a very important visit, very, very important. Uh, it brought, it uh, brought the two countries closer together, much closer together. We are very close in any case. But it was a very significant visit for us because um, uh, both governments had the chance to, to discuss further developments in our relations. And um, the most important of each is our cooperation between the One Belt, One Road initiative. This is uh, an initiative which we fully support. Uh, maybe you know that uh, within the framework of this initiative, China, has, China and Costco Pacific Company in particular has invested heavily in the port of Piraeus. This is not just the investment in the port of Piraeus which transports thousands of, con of Chinese containers to the rest of Europe. It is that this investment, this, this, this project in Piraeus is connected with the railway connection between Piraeus and the Hungarian capital Budapest. Budapest is the basis of China and Central Europe, commercially speaking, of course. So, with the modernization of the railway connection between the port of Piraeus and Budapest, we will have Chinese, and not just Chinese, other countries' products too, being transported very, very fast in, in Central and Western Europe. This is an investment, a project of strategic importance. It's not just commerce. It's something very, very important for us, for 
Southern Europe and for Central Europe. It's something, it's a project that Greece fully supports, fully supports. And this project, the Belt and Road project, is not just a project having to do with port infrastructure or railway infrastructure. This project will bring to Greece other Chinese investments too, like Huawei, ZTE, Hanergy and others, to name a few. Uh, this is very important for us because by having Chinese investments in Greece, we, we have the chance to have more job creation job creation. Because of the crisis, we have many unemployed people. So foreign investments are welcome in Greece. Chinese, most welcome, to be honest with you.